Jake Ludington here at HP Discover 2012 in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm here with Christian Verstrada, who is Chief Technologist of Cloud at HP. And we're going to talk about cloud as a, as a converged cloud, and what exactly does that mean? Okay, hi Jay. Uh, well, converged cloud, really, we started from the concept that when size does not fit all in cloud. What we mean is that different workloads deserve to be in different places because they have different characteristics and different requirements. And so converged cloud is a way to really, and a vision to really approach those multiple clouds concurrently so that you can move workloads from one place to another reasonably easily. It's all about giving the our customers the capability to go back and really look at the value of the services they try to deliver rather than to be down into the infrastructure and understanding what they're actually putting where. Now when you're talking about being able to put things where you want to put them, can you break that down a little bit? Uh, we, we talked about an example off camera, but can you kind of walk through what that looks like? Okay. Yes, so let's, let me take an example. The company has a whole bunch of applications. Some of those applications are really core to the way the company operates, to what the company does, to, to the value that the company brings to their customers and their business. Those are applications that you really want to keep close to home, probably in something like a private cloud or eventually a managed cloud. There's a whole bunch of other applications that you really need to have to be able to run your business but that don't differentiate you from anybody else. Those applications, you want to run them the cheapest and the fastest. You don't want to have any hassle about them. You may want to put them in a public cloud or in a managed cloud that's basically handled by others. Now, I can, I can decide that this is a core application that I have that I want to run in my private cloud, but how much capacity am I actually going to need? Hey, if I'm successful with this new stuff that I'm doing, I may require a heck of a lot of capacity. I don't want to have that success being nailed down by the fact that IT can't ramp up new servers fast enough because they can't order them fast enough. So I want to, even if that's a private cloud environment, I want to be able to burst out, for example, to a managed cloud so that the business can continue operating rather than being dependent on the speed at which IT can ramp up at their servers. So IT becomes really the broker of services to the business by positioning the appropriate service in the appropriate place in that cloud continuum rather than just being the one that ramps up and keeps the service running. So you're really talking about eliminating the, the friction that results from needing able to deploy new hardware or reconfigure infrastructure based on a specific application. Absolutely. That's exactly what it is, Jay. Yes. And and getting the IT really becoming a true enabler to the success of the business, giving the business the agility and the responsiveness that the business actually needs to be able to do their business and, and to grow the company as they want to do that. So if somebody's just getting started, let's say the you know executive level folks in like CIOs, uh, directors of technology are looking to get into cloud computing, where do they want to look first? Well, the first thing they look at is what is the vision of cloud that I really want to go and implement? Am I somebody that is very afraid and I want to keep everything in house? Or am I ready for that sort of a more open approach where I really focus on what I'm actually trying to achieve. That, I think, is the first question to really look at. The second question to look at is, hey, which are the applications that I have in my traditional world? Because, you know, the traditional world is not going to disappear anytime soon. What are the applications I have in my traditional world that actually would I would be better off being able to use the advantages of cloud, the capability of growing and shrinking the amount of resources that I need? What are those applications? And how am I going to position them on that cloud continuum? I actually talked about. And then from there, really start building that out and evolving. One of the key elements to do in there, though, that many people actually forget about is that IT may have to transform their way of operating to rethink themselves to actually become that strategic service broker I was talking about earlier. 
So you're saying that, that fundamentally the, the way the IT is operated may not work within the organization. It abs absolutely right. IT need to change. IT need to transform. It's no longer just keeping the lights on. It's really about becoming a central part in the building of the success of the enterprise. You know, technology and IT is really becoming core and central in most businesses today. If you think about insurances, if you think about banking, if you think about manufacturing, if you think about telcos, everywhere IT is really becoming part of the essence. The CIO has a unique opportunity to take, to be, take that role and to become the central person that transforms and demystifies that technology to the business, helps them innovate, helps them grow. He should grab that. Is there any sort of fundamental challenges in, in terms of uh, changing the way that the, the CIO's team looks at that? Because typically you don't think of technologists as being touchy-feely and, and interested in helping people. They, they always come across as being gatekeepers. Yes, yes. And I think that's the key and the central element, which is you need to rethink the way your organization is. You need to rethink the way you operate. I, I always bring out two key points. I say people that want to be successful in this, they need to have two things. They need to be curious which is ready to look at the new things that are out there and how they could be used and then they need to be creative go out understand what happens in other parts of the businesses understand what happens in other organization take those back really use them to, for the best of the way you actually bring the organization across do the appropriate change management give people a vision of where to go to and how to evolve and then motivate them through leadership. That's where the CIO can really shine. All right, well, curiosity and creativity, those sounds like two things you'd want in, in virtually any employee. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I think the younger generation that we're actually getting is absolutely great at that because they really have that and that's part of their essence. That's part of what they really want to take away and bring with them. So. While our, we as baby boomers are going to retire and you, need, you get those new people coming on board, take advantage of this to transform your organization to work differently than what you've actually been doing in the past. All right. Well, thanks, Christian. You're welcome.